What's good as graphics? Thank God for another video. Oh, bro, I'm trying to do the intro. But this how we starting? Come on, man. Where you going? I'm already sweating, boy. Woo. Now, in that last gameplay, I didn't really have to sweat, but I had to play a little bit. You know, I ain't really out here going flawless, but that's what I want. I want a little bit of competition, but it gets to a point where sometimes it's too much competition for this particular game mode, especially in pubs. And especially when it's consistent, it's consistent sweat, game in, game out, I'm getting dotted. But I usually play in a mixture of both because I don't really play to win all the time. Oh yeah, I was gonna say, I don't really play to win all the time, but when I do, oh my gosh. When I do, I get shot in the face like that. So listen, I usually float between some good games, some bad games, and go back and forth because I don't really go to win every game. I'm usually doing camos, so that's how I like keep my sanity while playing this. But if you're a good player and you want to win, like that's the purpose of playing, you wanna win, sometimes skill-based matchmaking might hold you back. Now, what I mean by this is, when you're playing and doing well, the game rewards you by trying to nerf you. Come on, man. That's right. As soon as you start doing good, they're gonna put you in a matrix with other people that's also doing good. Now, to a newer player, or somebody who just got to understand Call of Duty and learn how to play, this sounds pretty decent. I mean, why wouldn't you wanna play with people who are just as good as you? Yes, correct. It is good competition to play against people who are just good as you. However, when you have to play against them all the time and there's no reward, there's not even a ranking system that will determine how good you're doing, then it's a problem. See, at different skill ranks, the game plays differently, right? And I've noticed this by playing on both sides. Like I said, I'll go do knife challenges. I'll go do shields and launchers and everything like that. And the games play way differently. So to an experienced veteran player, they're gonna have different games. Even though things are supposed to be balanced for everybody, they're gonna have different games from the new and casual players. Now in my last commentary, I spoke about how skill-based matchmaking treats new and casual players, but in this commentary, I'm going to speak on how it affects veteran and high-skilled players. Now, sometimes new and casual players may rarely get into these type of lobbies, and if they do, it's probably one or two games where the best player on the team or on top of the lobby is like one or two of them carrying the team or getting all eliminations. Now, if you are a veteran and or high skilled player, well, first, let me make a distinction between the two. When I say veteran players, this is the player that been playing Call of Duty for like 10 plus years or even five years, right? You know the game, you know the series, you know what to do. And then the high skilled players, they can just join Call of Duty, but they will get into the same type of lobbies because they actually know how to play. Veteran players may not be as good as the high skilled players, but they have an expectation especially because how the game used to play back in the day, what we currently refer to as the golden age of COD. Now what typically happens is when a player, a good player, veteran player comes home from school or from work, you run into people like that. I mean, um, you just wanna come home from work and relax and play some games. Yeah, sometimes it's stressful, but sometimes you get your revenge like that and they get shot immediately. Man, I can't even reload. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. <laughs> now, nah, but on a serious note, um, we're all human. So we all go through the same type of emotions and we go through the same stress in life. But these lobbies aren't the same, right? As soon as you start to dominate, skill-based matchmaking starts to discriminate and they will eliminate your chances of having fun. Come on, man. Now, the reason why we want a variety of gameplay is because some of the things that happen in these sweaty lobbies are just not fun for anybody. It's not fun for me. It's not even fun for the other players. Even if you win, it's so stressful. It's not even fun to win all that much. Now, I'm gonna just name a few things that happen constantly when you're put in this skill-based matchmaking matrix. 
So if you don't get these things constantly in your lobbies, then you're not in the matrix. So all my new and casual players who don't experience this constantly, and you may have a problem with people complaining about the game, saying skill-based matchmaking is trash, it's bad for the game, I don't like this perk, I don't like that, complaining about everything, those people have been psychologically damaged by what the game has done, what they used to play and how they felt, right? Sometimes the skill-based matchmaking can manipulate the situation, and if you are a veteran and good player, you can spot these things out very easily and you can tell if you're being cheated. Sometimes people just complain. We understand it's a part of online. You just complain. But for the majority of the time, there is something going on here. And I may go into detail about some of these points. But one thing I want to talk about is that these lobbies have more than two or three high level players. What I mean is the whole lobby is high level players, right? Now to balance it out, if I did really good, somebody else did really good, they put us in the same lobby, somebody gotta lose. And this is when I say that they try to nerf you. If I am a high level player, right? Somebody else is a high level player. It might be a lot of situations that happen. We both can be very good, but the situations that they got the spawn traps, you got certain people playing certain weapons, you're in certain areas, it might make one person perform better than the other. But if you put one of those two people in a casual lobby, they might dominate all the time. So what they try to do is get everybody to even out at one KD so that everybody has a chance to eat out here. And that's cute and everything, but I don't want no little snack. I want a buffet, I want all you can eat because I work, I learn how to hunt so I can eat. The newer and casual players haven't really learned how to hunt effectively so they can survive out here in general population. Now amongst themselves, they're good. So basically what I'm saying is, if you're a veteran player and you have experience, that doesn't really translate well into the games because everyone else has experience and you have to play in a different play style so that you can effectively win the game if that's your primary goal. Now I'm gonna talk more about that in a future video. Stay tuned for that. But I'm just gonna move through some of these other things that you may experience in these sweaty lobbies. You get Match in progress a lot. I play free for all. Sometimes I would join a game, they're leading by four or five. I'll back out, come back in, and sometimes they troll you because the next person leading by eight. Come on, man. And that's not fun to feel like you're behind and didn't even have a chance. So the next one is bad connections. It seems like they will have a bad connection over good connection because they're trying to put you up in the matrix. And these are only people that may be far away from you that fits your profile. Yeah, they just so happen to have a bad connection because you guys are far away. Next one, spawn killing. Now this is a thing I like to call revenge spawns and this always been in Call of Duty in some form. Now it feels like in the last past four years of CODs, it has been turned up. Once you get an elimination, as soon as you go to turn around, somebody's right there to shoot you in the back. But then when you go hunt for somebody, you don't find anybody for like 30 seconds. So then, once you find one person, you find everybody. Everybody in the lobby comes to that one spot to come get you. Just like what's happening right now, right? I, was able, I wasn't supposed to get that kill. That person probably supposed to kill me. Then the person in the hallway is supposed to kill the other person. Now this isn't concrete, but it just feel like it. It just feel like it. Let me know in the comment section if you agree or you just feel like it. It's just, it's nothing concrete evidence, but you feel like it's been turned up. Like somebody's always ready to kill you right there. Now, sometimes the worst maps pop up. And yes, I'm talking about the maps that you personally don't like. It just seems like when you're in the matrix, that's the only maps you play and you gotta back out. They know you backing out, now you are gonna play this map today. Now, that's only a few things. I can go on and on and on, but my point is, on top of playing people at your same skill level, you have to deal with matches in progress where it's gonna be unfair at the beginning you have to deal with bad connections. Then you have to deal with spawn killing when you feel that the game just want to get you out of there. And then you have to play in the maps that you do not like the most. Now, just imagine if you're a new and casual players and this is what you have to deal with constantly. You just going to pop another game in and call it a day. But Call of Duty vets love Call of Duty and they can't play anything else because nothing is like Call of Duty. Heck, even Call of Duty is not even like Call of Duty with all the implementation of different other games they put in it over the years. 
and we appreciate the good stuff, but there's need to be a line that needs to be drawn. And look at this scoreboard. How we tie in the top five people got the same score. I just so happen to be at the top in this particular leaderboard, but the next game I might be at the bottom. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like, comment, how you feel about this commentary, and if you can relate. Thank you guys for watching again. Make sure y'all subscribe for more content, and I'll see y'all next time.